by Kate Young. The header is good, and it's the Thai defender John Tae Wook, and eventually Korea have broken the deadlock. You're listening to the K League United podcast, proud partner of Football Nation Radio. Hello, I'm going to say, oh, Ryan Walters back in the host chair in the Secrets Revealed version of the Kim Do Hoon bunker. And I'm joined this week by Paul Neat. Hello there. And it's just the two of us. It is. It is. That's because uh, John Book is so desperate for fullbacks that they've had to bring in Pete Hampshire and Matthew Bins. <laughs> they are on the way to uh, John Jibok yeah. Stadium as we speak to sign on the dotted line. So congrats to them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Big news. Um, I mean, I think a 30 plus left back, not throwing bins under the bus too much here. He's barely over 30. I, I mean, I'm not one to talk in that regard, but I think he's the exact <laughs> signing that they wanted. And and that is, oh, you know, that's the fullback transfer news of the week. There hasn't been anybody going to MLS or anything like that. That's no. the transfer news of the week. And then when he gets the bag, yeah, congrats to Kim Moon Wan. Oh yeah, Kim and Wan to LAFC. That's that is yeah. that's that's a very good move. And I'm not that clued up on MLS, but they did quite well last year, I think, LAFC. Yeah, they could and some would argue should have won um CONCACAF Champions League as well. They were in that they were in the final there, but an MLS team just can't beat a Liga MX team right now. But before we get into any of that, I think that uh, you were mentioning before we came on here that there was like a, a slightly late Christmas gift from you for you for being such a good boy this year. There was. I have, for okay. the first time in 18 years, bought FIFA. Oh! Yes. I, didn't, oh. I had no idea that you could buy it for the laptop for the... There was a PC version. I had no idea... I was like, okay. I need to buy a PS5 or a PS4, and that's obviously, I don't want to pay that, mu- that much money, but I realized that there is a PC version, so I bought it, and I bought a controller, mm-hmm. and I played a few games last night as Preston, and uh, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's, it's marvelous. It's pretty fun, right? And you went a really <laughs> long time, so like going from 18 to 19 to 20 to 21, you're like, oh, I see the slight changes they've made, but going from what, FIFA 03? Yeah. Honestly, I... Honestly, the um, you can hear the stadium announcer announcing the goal scorer and the substitutes in the local accent of of so oh, like yeah. when I was playing as Preston North End, it was a northern person. <laughs> like that is magnificent, and they even said about um, someone's car has been is uh-huh. it needs to be towed away. I was like that, like this, unbelievable. I was mind blown. But yeah, I um, I started the fifty fifty raffle. That's not yeah. northern, by the way, but that that's from the nineteen fifties, I think, isn't it? But um. <laughs> But uh, yeah, mind blown. So I um, I started a, just a championship season because the career mode was a bit too complicated. And he, yeah, um, I tried to sign Adam Taggart for Preston North End. Oh, and then when I I I'd realized when I went into the negotiating room that I'd picked my avatar as a lady oh. instead. So because I just thought it was a, a, a stylish person with a scarf and a nice suit. And I was like, why are they calling me Ms. Neat? I was like, that's very strange. But then um, I realized when I sat down to talk to the Sue and Bluings CEO, I was a lady. I was like, all right, well, Just there we go. Subverting expectations, man. Power exactly. in the boardroom. I like it. Exactly. I exactly. like it. Exactly. And that, that's a perfect transition because that is the kind of thing we're talking about. Those kind of conversations, not necessarily bringing Adam Taggart to Preston North End, but this is... We're, we're going to call this a, a transfer brief because these are our preseason yeah. briefings anyway. We're not going to go long. We're not going to list every single transfer. We're not going to go team by team. But there has been a lot going down. If you're not already following them, please do follow Korea Football News on Twitter. They're on top of all of this all the time, as are we at Kaylee United, but uh, not not quite to the extent that he is over there. Just all sorts of things going on. So again, we're not going to go team by team. We're not going to do all of them, but we do have some official ones and we'll talk about some of the bigger ones there. There are a ton of rumors and and Paul, you've been putting the rumors up on Patreon a lot lately. So we'll talk a little bit about those. And then uh, I guess we'll have, we'll have an ideal signing 
And I, anybody that's listened to me talk on this podcast before knows where I'm going to go with that. But I'm going to do it anyway. So I wonder where is this going to go. I don't know what region of the world could I possibly want to see a player sign from. But yeah, I, I, instead of the outgoings, because um, there are plenty of those, Sun Jun Ho officially has left Jumbook as well. So the league MVP is off once again, uh, a trend that kind of continues for K-League here. He's off to China. And uh, yeah, we'll get into some of the rumors of other people that we do expect to be having over to China as well. But let's start with some of the official stuff. And uh, Paul, I know you and I are both happy about this as, as folks that have covered FC Seoul that go to a lot of FC Seoul games. Na Sang Ho has officially signed with FC Seoul and should be should be the striker that's been very, very desperately needed for this club for a really long time. Scored seven goals with Songnam FC last year and in a short stint with them, played 19 games with them. Um, seven goals, you know, if you're looking at it on paper and you're like, if you're looking at his career on paper, you're like seven goals last year, barely played with Tokyo and had 16 goals in K2 in 2018. What's the big deal? But I think if you've watched him play, and if you if you saw what he did in Songnam with as little around him as he had around him, he didn't have Ki Sung Young putting in the ball for him. He didn't have Osmar back there putting in the ball for him. It, and there are also rumors of Palasevich joining as well from Pohong. But I mean, let's just talk about who's there. Let's talk about Na Sang Ho and, and what do you think he's going to bring to this team? Well, I do wonder where he's going to play because I think for the national team and for Gangwon as well, mate. For, for Gangwon, for Guangzhou as well, he was maybe a wide player, um, mm. a sort of an outside forward. I don't think. I mean, I would. I don't know. He's he's one of these players who's he's quite versatile. So he he could well play as a striker, or he could play as an outside forward. At the moment, with Seoul's lack of options as strikers, Park Ji Young is probably the only player that they've got left. Really, he's a, he's a, a recognised striker. So yeah, he could play as um, as a number ten or or as a an out and out striker, but um, he's very good. And you know, what, actually, before I go into how good he is, he wants to ruin my birthday. Go on. Yeah, I went down to Dejon in 2018 for my birthday to watch the mighty Dejon Citizen, uh-huh. and it was against Guangzhou. Uh-huh. I mean, we, we took a late lead. I think it was Can't 84 imagine. minute lead. Yeah, can imagine where this is going. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Kim Sung Sop scored, um, and I'm thinking, great, what what a birthday gift this is. Three points. I've not seen Dejon win at home in years. Um, and then, Guangzhou equalized. I was like, okay. A, a draw, it's not too bad. I, I'll, I'll, It's not ideal, but, you know, fair enough. And then, in the last minute of, of what felt like an eternity of extra time, Nasang Ho with some ridiculous overhead kick breaks my heart, scores the winner, and I was absolutely raging, beaming. <laughs> but that was when, that, but that was when I, I sort of first really saw how good that he was because he was the technique for that goal. It was, yeah, June two thousand eighteen, and it was it was such a good goal. He's such a good player, and signing him on a three year contract is really good business from FC Seoul. Really good business. Not alone. I don't like these. This this short termism in K League, where like, like last year we had Hanson Yu sign on, on, on the one year loan, and it seemed like there was never really a plan in place to sign him on a permanent deal. So a three year deal, very very good business. He's only going to get better as time goes on, mm-hmm. and he gives Seoul options out, out wide. They've now got really four wingers to choose from. They got him, uh, Pak Tong Bin has signed as well. He's ha- having had uh, a spell in Europe. They've got the two young lads, Choi Nguk and uh, Jung Han Bin as, as as well. So sorry, and Jung Han Min, I should, I should mm-hmm. say. So yeah, they they've got options now. They just need a striker, a proper striker, and maybe another central midfield player if Ali Bayev goes. But um, I can talk about that in a bit later. A bit later. A bit. Yeah, I think um, I think he'll be. Well, he won't be missed because they didn't play him very much. But uh, yeah, we'll get into that in the rumor section. Mm. Uh, I think the other the other thing that I wanted to touch on here it's been kind of surprising what's going on in ulsan and that team's being gutted man oh my god yeah it officially there isn't a ton through the door officially right now park jiho is out already um and a lot of the players that we saw shine 
in AFC Champions League, a lot of these players that finally went and got their moment, they're now out. Uh, Lee Sang Min, uh, that's a permanent transfer there. But uh, Moon Jung In, Yoon Young Sun, uh, Jung Dong Ho, uh, Kim Min Duck. I mean, they, it's the list is going on and on. It's all but confirmed that Junior's leaving for China, and the there are rumors of Shin Jin Ho, the captain that just lifted the continental title, going to Pohong. Yeah, what? um I posted what this going on. I know, right? I posted this in the um my transfer rumors piece that went out on Tuesday the twelfth. And according to one rumor, it says that the, he's already had the medical with Pohang and he's with the club in their preseason training camp in Jeju. So he it's basically done. Mm-hmm. It's just not been announced yet. But that is just a rumor. I don't know um whether there's any truth in that or not. But if that is true, that that is very interesting. And you have to think you have to be very concerned. And I know Dang, our Ulsan columnist, is also a little bit concerned about just how many changes Hong Kong Bo is making to this team. Just because a player is 30 or older, it doesn't mean that they are useless. I mean, look at look how good Junior Negrao has done for the last two years, and he's 33, 34 now. So mm-hmm. it doesn't it I don't know. I'd be very concerned. There's a lot of experience leaving that team. And Shin Jin Ho was the captain as well. I mean yeah. Yeah, I'd be very I mean, worried, but good signing for Pohang. Yeah, great news for Pohang. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, they. I mean, and they need a little bit of good news because it looks like a lot of their influencers from last year are not going to be there. But for Ulsan, I guess my thing is just we've known the talent is there. The issue with them not winning the league wasn't talent; it was mentality. It, it was that Kim Do Hoon couldn't get them over that hurdle when they needed it. I mean, he did an ACL, but this is a very different ACL behind closed doors in a short amount of time. And th- look, there were a lot of adversities to deal with. I'm like, th- that trophy deserves to be up there with all of the other trophies. My point is more that Ulsan didn't have time to get into their own head the way that they could or the way that Kim Do-hoon could a lot of times and their momentum carried them through, right? But I mean, you know, we can't we can't begrudge Ulsan winning that and then celebrate the World Cup every four years as, as if it's like a different situation of like momentum just carrying one team through. But I just don't get this complete gut and restructure of a team that that was right there. They were so close to the treble this year. I mean, they were literally in the FA Cup final. They barely lost that. They barely lost out on the league title. They had a chance to win the league title on the last day of the season. And then they go and win the continental competition. And now they're being gutted. I, it, it's just... Yeah, I, I, I saw that team as... as making steps forward, not a team that mm-hmm. was on the cusp of, of being a spent force. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to have to bring in a few centre-backs now because they've lost Yin Young Sun, who's gone to Sioux mm-hmm. 1 FC. They've lost Kim Min Duk. All right, he didn't play that many games, but he, he did feature in the ACL for them. He's gone mm-hmm. to Dejon. So now they've just got Kim Ki Hee there, who didn't really get a look in until the Champions League, and that was because of injury. Mm-hmm. Um, Jong Sung Hyun is, is, is going to Gim Chon Sangmu, so they, they've only got two really recognized center backs there, so they're going to have to bring in new players. And with any new team, with, with bringing in so many new players, time will, will be needed. So if they can get them in through the door with enough time before the new season starts, then great. But it's going to be a slow start, I think, mm-hmm. with that many changes to, to any team and with, with a manager who hasn't. hasn't managed at k-league level ever so yeah it's gonna be very interesting yeah weird one weird one with olson there and then uh, I, I think you, you kind of alluded to the other team there are, i think there are two other teams that we need to talk about suan fc Whew. well oh my god they're done. finding everybody well done i mean i think uh, this has been touched on on twitter by a few folks but I, I think they're going about things really really intelligently and i think it was really smart of them to sell masatoshi ishida to gangwon fc a team that we're also going to talk about but i i mean i really like masa as he's known here i, I think he's going to be a good signing for gangwon but his stock's never going to be higher than it is right now and i think this is where busan went wrong last year uh, I mean, we've been saying for years that they had a team ready for K1 and they thought they did, but they didn't. Uh, and they didn't sell the players that they had. And and that didn't work out for Busan. So Suwon, they've taken a very different track here. They've gotten a lot of very proven players. 
And uh, to just dip into the rumor mill a little bit there, Ali Bayev is also rumored to be on the way to Suwon FC. And I think that is just a fantastic signing. I've always liked him for FC Seoul. Uh, he takes up the Asian player quota spot with a Uzbek passport. So uh, it's it's just a really good bit of business. That one's not official from them yet, but... Well, according to K-League United sources, wink, wink, um, Ali, Bayef, <laughs> Ali Bayef would prefer to stay at FC Seoul. He still has one year left on his contract. The Sioux and FC deal is not completed yet. Um, okay. it's, so we'll see. That Obviously, there, there is interest. But... Um, I suppose it just depends how how much Park Jin Sop wants to keep him, or if he does. Because you would think with a new manager and a clean slate, there might be a chance for him to sort of fight for his place in the team there at FC Seoul. But he's been through his two week self isolation. I think he's already with the squad, I presume. So we'll see. But he still wants to stay at, stay at Seoul. But they are targeting the right kind of player, though. Like the <laughs> players who've got a bit of a point to prove players with experience. I mean, they have lost, basically, or they, they will lose when if or when Anam Gyeong Jun does leave and go to Gangwon. They're going to lose more or less their whole forward line. They'll still have Lars Veldovic there, but they still need players to flank him. But they brought in Kim Sung Jun from Gangnam FC, Kim Ho Nam from Incheon, Yang Dong Hyun is, is an experienced striker. I didn't... It, it was a bit lackluster for Pohang. For Pohang. The song Nam last year, but still experienced striker. So someone's come on off the bench and try and change a game. Uh, and also a, another very shrewd signing is Kim Sang Won, the left back. He was he oh. came in from Pohang, but at Anyang uh, in 2019 when they reached the top four, I think I'm right in saying that he was the either the, the top assist maker or joint top assist maker, and that was from left back. So we'll I think that that's a very shrewd signing. So I already. I think and this is this might be a bit controversial. I think Sue and FC have a stronger squad than Sue and Bluings. As of right now, I don't As know. Of right how. Now. I mean, Sue and Bluings are in a, a bit of a mess right now. Um, Yoon Ju Tae is another name that's out there that's available. Uh, again, we'll kind of touch on that in the rumors. But yeah, I think Sue are doing well. And to just kind of wrap up some of the official stuff for now, and again, we will go into detail on every single team with all of our writers across the country at another point in time. But as for right now, Gangwon FC, uh, they've been close, and uh, I think they're going to be close again next year. Uh, we did already mention that they brought in Masatoshi Ishida, who I think is really going to help them in the midfield there. Uh, although, again, we're dipping into rumors here, but th there are rumors that they are going to part ways with Hankook Young. Are they insane? Uh, yeah, I think JJ United are interested. I don't know why they would let him go. Um, he would be someone that you'd build the team around. Really, not you would even think about letting him go. I suppose it would depend if a, if another team came in and made a better offer, if, if they could if they could improve his um, weekly weekly wages. But I don't know. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't sell him at all. No, that one didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, the other big name coming in there is Yoon Suk Young coming over from Kashiwa, and yeah, we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see how this team gels together. Uh, Byung-Soo Ball, like we've talked about before, I think only has about one more year. But uh, I'm also looking at the amount of time that we're going here on our, our short, our quote-unquote short version. Yeah, uh, I just, I just before we move on, I want to just mention one big signing that I think is another statement of intent is Oban Sok to Incheon because they have struggled to put together a, a consistent back four or two centre-backs that have stayed there long-term EJ Song, who joined from John Book, there was some issues there. I, I thought he was ideal for them. Someone with experience didn't mm -hmm. work out. He's now left. But Oban Sok signing on a three-year contract, that is a very, very important signing. And then perhaps an indicator that there is some in investment there at Incheon. There was reports of some outside investment. Um, I'm not sure where exactly. But Magosha has extended his stay as well. And we always say with Incheon that, okay, they've, they've survived relegation. now. It's the time for them to really put that all behind them, try and focus on maybe getting into the top half. I think this year might be it because last year was, I mean, we've been saying it forever, but that last year was the greatest of the great escapes. Yes. They look dead and buried. And this has to be the, the turning point for them. And Oban Sok, experienced defender, 
idea for them. He he's one of my picks in this early stages of this transfer window has been a really important signing. Yeah, you don't want to go you don't want to go too much closer than they did this year. So yeah, solidifying the back line is always going to be a good choice for them. And uh hopefully they play Itehi in net to start the year because he's always looked better for me. All right. Let's move on uh, just before we run out of time on our short version here. Let's move on to some of the rumors. And yeah, you've been keeping up with these on Patreon for our subscribers there with in list form and in audio form. So if you if you're not getting enough of the Paul Neat news voice here on the pod and on the actual news here in Korea, you can also get a little daily dose over there. But uh, let's let's run through some of the rumors that you've got up there right now. Some of the juicy ones. Yeah, so these rumor articles are going to be going out, I think, every day now because there's just so many, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to get them on Patreon before they get talked about in the press. So mm-hmm. I was supposed to be just doing them once every every two or three days, but on earlier on um, Monday the 11th and Tuesday the 12th of January, the two went out. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot. I think one of the more intriguing ones was. Pulosevic being linked to three clubs, Seoul, Dejon, and mm-hmm. Daegu. Um, I think the latest, according to the rumor mill, is that um, he was wanted by all those those three teams. Dejon are prepared to make him the highest paid player in the K-League, but the player is said to prefer a move to Seoul. Seoul's transfer offer, though, to Nacional, his parent club in Portugal, is lower than Dejon's. Dega were also involved, but it seems that Seoul are leading the race to sign him. It was also suggested uh, that he's already had a medical with Seoul somewhere abroad. That was of uh, as of Tuesday, January the 12th. Um, and perhaps by the time this comes out, he will have signed for Degu or somebody else. But um, that's one of the more intriguing ones. There were some other ones as well. And it also seems that uh, Degu are doing all their shopping in Japan. Because they've been linked to um, quite a number of players already. They've they're right. also yeah, An Yong An An Yong Woo from Sagan Tosu has also been linked, and they've also been linked to a Brazilian winger in J League. So it, they were in talks with with somebody, but then things went pretty quiet on that front. Then they moved on to Wanderson, ex Dejon, Jeju, Ponghang, and Tron and Dragons. Um, ex everybody, yeah. But he, he candidate as well. He was, yeah. Uh, he, but his current club has the option to extend his deal. So they have moved elsewhere to a different player, a Brazilian in J League, believed to be Anderson, who was at FC Seoul a couple of years ago. He's at Consadole Sapporo at, at, at the moment. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, there's such, um, root. He had such nice things to say about K League once he left and was over in yeah. Japan. Yeah, very strange. Um, he wasn't the best of players, but um, he was kind of effective in an unorthodox way. But yeah, there's lots of rumors. There's, there's um, even one that a few days ago where FC Seoul were linked to a former Arsenal youth player who's a German, and it's believed to be Thomas Eisfeld, uh, who's currently playing in the second tier in Germany with Bochum. So we'll see about that one. But yeah, there's lots of rumors as you would expect at this time of of year. But um, yeah, if you want to be the first to see these in English, then the Kaylee United Patreon is the place to do so. Yeah, a lot going on over there. A lot of rumors flying in as we have them uh, coming to us. And there was even one... I feel like this comes up every single transfer window, but there was even a rumor of Lee Sung-woo maybe being in for Ulsan. I I did read that one. Yeah, it's... um, interesting really you, you would think that if he was to come back to k-league it would be the ulsan for john back or john book i know he's a super bluings fan though so maybe um loyalties in in that in that sense would would uh help him come back to k-league but he, he said to um chowani in his youtuber he's, he's now a youtuber he said that um he's a super bluings fan and he would like to play for the club one day in his career, but I don't think, I don't know. I, it'd be very unlikely. I think for a player like him to come back to K-League would be like admitting that he's failed in Europe. Um, he's getting a bit more game time, or he was getting a bit more game time in Belgium. But yeah, that that would be interesting, wouldn't it, Isangu? That would certainly sell some shirts, some merch. Right. Um, 
I mean, I I think. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of his, uh, just because I think you got to prove it at some point. But I think that's where it could be really interesting for him to to come back to Korea. Anyway, he's never played in K League, but and and just get some confidence, just get some minutes, maybe get some goals, hopefully get some goals, hopefully entertain some folks. Uh, we're seeing this in A-League right now with Tommy Jurich. Tommy Jurich, Jurich, uh, I'm going to say Jurich. Anyway, he's back with Adelaide United and like just kind of seeing the ball go into the back of the net after a couple of years in Europe and not not necessarily clicking as much. And Jurich is still young enough that he could go back abroad. Lee Sung-woo is 100% young enough that he could go back abroad. And I think... I think it would be a smart career move, to, uh, as we've said before, and I wanted him um, for my imaginary team <laughs> last year, Sokcho City. That was He was going to be our marquee signing. He and a guy that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but I, I think it would be a good move for him to just come back, get some confidence up, and and play for a team that we thought was going to be contending for a title. Ulsan still could, but ooh, they're missing a lot. They do still have Juan Duje in that midfield, though, so he'll be pulling some strings and doing a lot of work there. So, I mean, there are worse teams to join. Uh, Ulsan's in Champions League as well. So, you know, you're going to be able to get that experience. They're an ambitious club, for the most part, challenging for titles right now, or at least we thought to this transfer window. We'll see how things shake out in the end. Hopefully, they're going to be using some of these sales to bring people in, but that's one that I thought was interesting. And then, uh, yeah, again, Palasevich, uh, it, it, he's going to be a massive signing for anybody, anybody. And I, I can't, I can't believe Pohong just let him go. Uh, maybe last transfer window is when they should have looked to do something about that. And Ilyachenko is another one that, uh, <laughs> we'll see where he lands. So all sorts of things going on there, but Paul, we are, we're running out of time for our quote unquote short version here. So I'll throw this back to you. Who's, Who's one signing or, or maybe a type of signing, if we want to go the easy route, that you would love to see either come to K-League or specifically Dejan Hana Citizen? Well, before he announced where he was now going, it would have been Dejan, to make it Dejan Hana Citizen. But um, I thought he'd have been, you know, a good signing to have. Dejan are lacking a striker, someone who would be being a bit of experience and score goals. I would love to see Dejan sign for Dejan, but obviously that's not happening but I think someone like Jumin Q, um, I'm not sure how much game time he's going to get in K-League 1 with JG next year. He only made 14 starts it's in 2020. Um, eight goals is a decent return from, from that. He's got the quality. We know that. We've seen him score goals in K-League 1. So maybe he will get game time. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was injury. I don't know, you know why he didn't play that many games last year. But he would be someone who I'd be looking to try and target and testing JJ's resolve because bringing in players who've got something of a point to prove who coming down from K-League 1 or coming from a big team mm-hmm. will be where I'll be going. You know, they've signed Lee Jin Hyun from, from Daegu. He's another one kind of similar, you know, young enough, not not so young now that he's an under-22 player, but young enough to be able to sort of add a bit of um, I don't know, enthusiasm into midfield. And Kim Min Dok from Ulsan is another one who was a, a similar type of signing. But yeah, I mean, but for Seoul, Felipe from Guangzhou would have been my one. Oh. I think he'd been ideal. You know, 12 goals and 20 more appearances last year. Someone who popped in something else very well. Mm-hmm. And he'd be the focal point of the team that Seoul really need. Yeah, I think that'd be really, that'd be a great shout for them if they could get him up front. And I mean, even if he's not banging in the goals himself, we know that he's capable of the holdup play that would open up space for Nasang Ho. And uh, hopefully, Cho young Uk. hopefully we can see him finally do something. Um, I, I mean, I wasn't even going to bring him up, but honestly, Cho young Uk might be somebody... I would love to see him move down to K2. I would love to see alone. him the year in K2. Yeah, on loan. 100% on loan. Um, do for him what Jumbuk did for Han sung Yu by sending him over to FC Seoul for a year, knowing he's going to get minutes. I think Cho young Uk, kind of like we were just talking about with Lee Sung-woo, he needs to see the ball go in the back of the net. He needs to have a big season. I think if he can go down to K-League 2 and a team that's going to be contending, maybe like a Dejan, maybe like a Junum, um, I don't think he's going to go to Junum. That would be amazing. But I do think go down there, get 20 goals in K-League 2. Just just have a year and have fun playing again. Um, I don't know if he's going to get that with Seoul. And I feel like, especially with he the lack of... He needs a gap year. He needs yeah, a gap year to go find himself. 
a gap. Yeah. Yeah. He needs yeah. a gap <laughs> here, man. He needs to go down and um, just enjoy his football again. And then the stakes aren't so high. You don't have to be Ooh. the striker for FC Seoul anymore. You can go and be the guy for Junam or Daejeon or Gangnam or one of these other teams that are ambitious and trying to come up next year or not. I mean, go to a team that maybe doesn't have promotion hopes and you can just be the guy and bang in 20, 25 goals, something like that, then come back to FC Seoul next year with confidence. I mean, they don't have enough depth up top for me to think they would actually do that, but I would like to see him go to K2, honestly, because I, 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 he just didn't make the step this past season. Um, I, I, I mean, I wasn't expecting 15, 16 goals, something like that, but more than, what do you get, two, three? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I think it was three. I just don't think that they that they found his real position. Right. And they just need to basically decide what he is. Is he a striker? Is he a wide player? Is he an attacking midfield player? And then play him there yeah. consistently and regularly because he's not going to learn his trade by getting 10 minutes off the bench at left wing and then playing in centre midfield and then playing up front for, for 15 minutes here and there. It's just not going to work, you know? Yeah. Sometimes being, being versatile can hinder a player you know um i mean when i spoke to osmo about him a few years ago he said that he has got the intelligence and the ability to to play in a number of different roles but for me personally i just think he needs to find one position and and really learn it yeah agreed he is not however my ideal signing my ideal signing would be safawi rashid who is back from portugal the malaysian international uh he didn't work out in Portugal. Just could work out in K League. Uh, that would be a massive, massive, massive market to get into. We've seen what he can do in AFC Champions League with JDT. We know he's got the quality, and I, I would just love to see him over here. FC Seoul could use somebody of his ilk, and I think getting him into the capital, getting him somewhere where they know how to sell shirts. So Jumbook, because they're the only team that actually know how to sell shirts internationally. Uh, but I don't want him to go there for obvious reasons. But I think he would be a, a, a tremendous signing for the league in general. Obviously, there's still that connection with Vietnam. So um, maybe somebody like Win Tian Lin, Win Kong Hai. The, I mean, those are the those are the dream dream options there. It would be nice to just get somebody over from Vietnam and and really take advantage of the connection that's there with Park Hong So still in charge and doing well with the Vietnamese national team. Take advantage of that goodwill and get K League in into the into the market and into the minds of people that are watching V League, and then maybe we start to see that uh, as a potential pipeline. Like we're seeing the Thai league currently using K league <laughs> as a, uh, as a testing ground in a lot of ways. There've been a lot of K league players that have gone over to the Thai league this window. And I would love to see that reversed and see some players coming here from the Thai league or some players coming here from the V league. Um, or, you know, maybe again, the other way around, maybe getting some Korean players over into Vietnam would help. But again, this is always going to be my thing. It's always going to be a thing. We were so close. We were so close. It looked like Jump Book was gonna go ahead and do it, but they didn't. So we just need one one team to to successfully bring an ASEAN player over, and then that'll be it. The the floodgates will open, I'm sure. Um, he who dares wins, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it's just whoever, wh- whichever team can be bold enough to um, to make that first move. Hopefully, we do see it because having a, an extra foreign player spot. And not using it is a waste. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, like you said, Ryan, with Park Hang So being the manager of Vietnam, I'm really surprised that that route hasn't been explored more. There's, yeah. you know, you've got a Korean speaker who who works with these players regularly. He knows them better than most, certainly mm-hmm. better than most of the scouts in K League. Just give him a phone call, send him a message on on Kakao Talk to say, how is this? Can you recommend me a left back? Yeah, I mean, three. And he's he's doing the full national team as well as the U twenty threes. Right, perfect. You know, it it makes little sense that that hasn't been explored. Yeah. Not even just a little bit, but at all. It's weird. Yeah, it does, it, I mean, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Even in the age of Corona, because we've seen how much player movement is going on, and that's not affecting things a whole hell of a lot there. So, it, it yeah, it's a bizarre one. Hopefully, we see something change in that regard this year. But as as usual, that's my wish list. 
for the transfer window. And as we kind of already alluded to, I, I don't think it would be right for us to end uh, a transfer segment, even one that's the uh, informal preseason one like this, without a hat tip to Dejan Damjanovic, the man that played 380 matches, 198 K-League goals. It's heartbreakingly close to 200. Uh, I, you know, I think we all had dreams of him maybe returning to Incheon and just banging in a couple of goals there, playing with Magosa up top as countryman. Uh, that would have been great. He did finish with three K League titles and one FA Cup. Uh, I and mean, a League Cup. and a League Cup. That's right. And came oh, just so so tantalizingly close in ACL, both with FC Seoul and then with Suwon Samsung Blue Wings. Uh, just just a fantastic career here in korea and hopefully we'll see him again in korea uh always welcome on the podcast we could always use a different third bins isn't here this week we'll just replace him a day on but uh as well, always I'm hoping, that, I'm hoping that in the acl group stage kitchy get drawn against the k-league team i'm really hoping that oh, that great. happens and, we, and then we definitely will get him on the podcast get him against daegu <laughs> oh that'd be funny be amazing yeah uh, but yeah uh, as always a big thanks to Dayon for for believing in us very early three four years ago something like that yeah 2017 now yeah he was only this the second player that we'd interviewed in person really oh yeah, 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 Chapman yeah. Was the first um and yeah Dayan, i think i think it's worth mentioning very briefly just how down to earth that he is for, for a larger than life character he you know ryan obviously we had some technical issues when we first did the interview the the camera wasn't recording and it all went a bit wrong and he wasn't bothered was he he just said oh no. well let's just have a few drinks and something to eat and then we'll um we'll do it again next week so we came back back into it one and we met him again and then carried on as if as if all the questions are being asked for the first time so absolute legend i'm going to see him go I, I definitely thought he was worth another season i mean maybe i'm a bit biased yeah. um but i would love to have seen him finish his career at fc so i do think he, yes. he would have been able to contribute i don't think he's eight i think his, his age is is um obviously going against him he's 40 this year but he could have he could have done an eat on gut roll at fc so he doesn't have to start every game but he but he showed last year with Daegu in a shortened season with a really hectic schedule that he can do it and he got nine goals that's yeah. that that's very good so yeah, he will be stuck on 198 goals and 48 assists as well, agonizingly. But um, good luck to yeah. him, and hopefully we'll speak to him soon. Yeah, uh, and we should also say a tremendous signing for Kitchy. I think that's a statement oh, yeah. of intent from them uh, for for the league, obviously, but also for ACL. I don't know if they've had uh, well, they've they've had quite a few big name players actually in their time, but another massive statement of intent from them, and uh, you know, just another thing that makes ACL all the more interesting as it always is. But uh, that's going to just about do it for us this week. If you have any questions, comments, or reactions, do please get those in on social media where you can reach us at Kayleigh United, or you can email us at info at kayleigheunited.com. If you leave us a podcast review, wherever you listen to this podcast, you'll be met, entered into this month's Kayleigh Kit Contest, which is actually just a giveaway. I just like saying Kayleigh Kit Contest because I like alliteration. Uh, it is a Suan FC kit from a couple of years ago to celebrate their return to K League One. And we'll get a new one up there sooner than later. And as we've mentioned throughout the show, if you'd like to support us, you can do so on Patreon. Tiers start as low as $1. And then the good stuff starts at $3 and $5. And thank you very much to all of our new patrons. Uh, we've had a few come in. I will get your names for next week's podcast. Sorry, I don't have them in front of me right now. I've been very busy today, but I will have them next week. But for Paul Neat, I'm Ryan Walters. Thanks so much for listening. Jump to the